Hi. This is RC500 Loop Station from Boss. It's a two-track looper and the next generation for their popular RC30 looper. And it has a few important new features. A third stomp switch. A graphic LCD screen that enables deep customization of the pedal's behavior. And it also has new MIDI I.O. and different effects. Let's take a look. Let's start with an overview. Like I mentioned, the RC500 is a two-track looper, meaning it can record and playback two different length independent loops at the same time. These loops can be synced to each other or just doing their own thing at their leisure if you like. You also have one-shot modes for either one. You can loop in stereo if you like, but also assign each track to a different input or output as well as any panning in between. Aside from the two tracks, the RC500 also has a third drum groove track with a few different preset kits and patterns, including a simple metronome if you want, with a few interesting features we'll look at regarding to how you can customize it. The RC500 has 99 memory banks that can store both loops and memory bank settings, which comes in very handy as you customize this. Individual loops can be up to 90 minutes each, which is obviously overkill, but the total onboard storage is 13 hours, which is good to know if you want to take a lot of content with you and play it back. You can save your loops and then transfer them to your computer over USB in storage mode. The RC500 has a few built-in effects, we'll take a listen to them later, but basically a reverb for the drum track and a few repeat and scatter effects for the audio loops as well as a reverse playback mode. The panel itself is pretty straightforward. You've got level faders for both tracks, a dedicated knob to change presets or memories as they're called here, and a dedicated mic gain knob with phantom power control. And then you've got buttons to edit the various settings of each of the tracks, the rhythm section, the memory, which like I said, is the preset or patch that you can swap out, overall settings, and then a few settings to handle the IO. One of my personal favorite features is that the LEDs are full color RGB LEDs. And while the LCD screen isn't a color one per dot, its backlight is in color. So if you're like me, one of the 8% of men with a slight red-green color blindness, this is a fantastic upgrade. I noticed that the camera is a little bit color blind to this blue, but trust me, it is blue. So blue means an empty track. And then when you're looping, you swap out between red and green or yellow for overdub. Green is just simple playback. And then white indicates that there's content in a track. Not only that, if you're even more color challenged than me, then there are a few display options, one of which will just write the status, the looping status right here on the screen. So if we clear this out and hit record, then we're recording and then playing back, going into overdub, playback. There's no option to customize these colors, but even this is a huge step forward. From an I.O. perspective, on the back you've got a microphone input with phantom power control in the input menu. Two quarter inch inputs, two quarter inch outputs, each assignable to any one of the tracks. 3.5 millimeter MIDI I.O. You need a cable or dongle to convert from regular five pin MIDI to this kind of cable and that's a, uh, you need a type A cable. You can expand this with two external stomp switches or an expression pedal, which you can route to any one of the internal parameters. You can download wave files off this using the USB port and powers standard center negative nine volt power, though of course Boss recommends you use theirs. The pedal can also be battery powered with four AA batteries. So that's the overview. I'm gonna assume you know how looping pedals work. You've got two tracks. Basic functions are record, play, overdub, and stop, and then you use this to select one of the two tracks. And you can see that blink over here as well. So those are the basics. But what I think is the highlight of the RC500 is how you can customize the tracks, memory, and overall pedal settings and behavior. Now, before I start, a fair warning, we're going into deep menu diving territory here. You don't have to do this and the pedal will work fine out of the box, but if you want it to work the way you do, 
you'll want to customize it. So for example, in the intro jam that I played, I wanted the timing to be based on my initial loop time, the loop time of track one, not the internal clock, but I did want track two to be synchronized and quantized to track one. I also wanted overdubbing to start immediately when I stop recording a loop, which isn't the default, and I wanted undo to happen when I release a long press on record, not when I press it. All of these and many more are accessible in the menus, so let's dig in and look at the details. Let's start with the tracks. The menus for both tracks are identical, so we can just look at one. Reverse is pretty simple. You record a loop, and it will reverse it. And then other settings are loop effects. You can choose to apply a loop effects to either of the tracks. We'll talk about loop effects in a bit. You've got a one-shot mode, so rather than looping, you can just have either of the tracks just trigger once. And then levels, you can use this fader for that. Panning and start mode can be either immediate or you can fade it in and then same, let's not get that back. And then stop mode, same thing, immediate, fade out or at the loop end. Now we won't go over all of these, but I did want to highlight a few of the things. So you can set a loop length in advance before you record. You can't edit that if there's content inside, but if I erase this loop, then you can either loop freely or choose any number of measures for which you'll need to have a rhythm or external clock working. And then the last feature I think that's important to highlight is you can have the looper listen to either one or all of the inputs. So if you want to loop different instruments or have completely separate chains, you can treat this as two individual and separate loopers. Moving on to the right, you've got rhythm controls. Tempo is something that you can set manually or it'll just auto detect based on what you're playing. One thing that is noteworthy is that this will time stretch your audio. It's a pretty basic time stretch algorithm. So say if I play this, And yeah, we want to turn off reverse. Anyway, so if I hit the uh, tempo button, I could slow this down. It's a basic algorithm. It's not designed for extreme slow tempos, but it works a bit better when you speed it up. And it does work well on speech. So I have prepared a recording of myself counting to four. One, two, three. So here too, extreme three, four, slow one, rates, two, three, extreme four, slow one, time two, stretches three, four, one, two, are stuttery, three, four, one, two, three, but when you speed four, it up, it works one, quite two, nicely. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, the point two, behind three, time stretching four, one, being two, to change three, the tempo four, one, of a loop two, three, without four, changing its pitch. So back to business, let's talk about the rhythm tracks. You can edit the rhythms by long pressing this button. You've got control over rhythm level. You can add reverb to the rhythm. So. That's that. By the way, if you press this in, it'll change parameters quickly. And then you have a few pattern options. I think there are over 50 of these in here. And what we could do with a slower tempo, maybe. Anyway, let's keep looking at this. Each pattern has two variations. And um, yeah, there are, I think, 16 different kits that you can choose from. So that's uh, nice. And then you can change the beat. This is pretty cool. You can't do this while, um, while a pattern is playing or while there's a loop in memory. So let's erase this. However, you can get uh, yeah, pretty diverse in here, totally into Radiohead territory if you want, and the beats will adapt to it. Which is, I think, pretty fantastic. And uh, yeah, hold on, long press here. Let's go back into this and play. Yeah, a few other options here. There are fill options which you can assign to be triggered either with an onboard or external foot switch. And then one of the interesting things is part controls. So if the beats are too much for you, and there's a metronome here as well, then you can turn various parts on or off. This is typically, part one is typically the kick. 
And then you have four other parts, up to four other parts, depending on the beat. which I think is a really nice way to get a lot more out of the onboard grooves. Okay, so we're not going over everything. There are some tone controls. Anyway, that's the rhythm menu. Let's move on to the memory menu. This is a big one because this also has a few sub menus. One of them is the rhythm sub menu, so you don't have to get into it by long pressing here. You can also get into it using the memory button. Anyway, aside from rhythm, the memory or preset parameters has five major categories recording options, playback options, loop effects, control, and assign. So let's go over these briefly. Again, we won't go over all the parameters, but let's dive a bit deeper. The fault for looping is obviously overdubbing when you're adding layers to a loop, but you can also choose to replace the existing content if you want. You can move from recording to playback or recording to overdubbing, like I mentioned earlier. You can quantize loop recording between tracks one and two. You can automatically start recording based on the threshold level you set. So those, I think, are the highlights of the record menu in the memory menu. Let's move on. Play mode has a few options. Again, we won't go through all of them. An important one, I think, is the fact that you can choose to have the tracks play back together or swap out each other. And then loop effects lets you determine which effects are applied to the loop. Now, these aren't your traditional effect. They're more like rhythmic tempo synced effects. So let's maybe record a simple loop. So I've got a metronome set here to keep me in time because timing is important for loop effects. Okay, so we have our basic loop. Now we need to make sure that loop effects are on in the track menu, which I did. Anyway, let's play this back. No need for the metronome anymore. And these are the loop effects. So you need to turn them on, and then, as you can hear, they sort of mess with the timing, except for vinyl flick, which is something you can activate with a stomp switch. And yeah, there are a few scatter effects. So these aren't the typical effects you'd expect, and it would have been nice if there were effects like chorus, reverb, or delays here. Um, yeah, but that's... That's what loop effects are. Like I mentioned, aside from these, there's a reverb, but that only applies to the rhythm section. Okay, let's move on to the deepest menu dive of them all. The next menu is the control menu. So this lets you customize the function of the three pedal stomp switches, two external stomp switches and an expression pedal, which are optional accessories. And the number of things that these can do is staggering these are all different workflows for each of the switches. We obviously won't go over all of them, but just to give you an idea of the extent of what's going on here, I'll also put an overlay on screen with all the various options. So you can, yeah, literally disable a stomp switch if you want. You'll want to have the manual nearby for these, and hopefully I'll find the one that gets me back to, uh, to the default, which I think is this. All right, now aside from changing the function of the stomp switches and the optional external controls, you also have a separate assign menu with eight different assigns. What this lets you do is let you assign, say, incoming MIDI CC or other controls to dozens of different parameters in the pedal. Now I won't scroll through a, a long list of parameters, I'll show it on screen. Let's maybe instead take a look at a real world example. So this cable is a MIDI type A cable, which will work in this case. You just need to plug it into the MIDI input. So now we have control over one, two, three, both four, transport, one, two, three, four, one, and clock, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, Four, one, two, three, and you can four. also assign MIDI CC controls to different parameters here. So for example, I'll go into the memory menu, go into the assigns, assign number one, turn that on, and then choose a source, which is, in this case, MIDI CC 20, which is what this is programmed to, and then go for a target, which is, where are we at? Rhythm level one. So now we've got control one, two, over one, rhythm level one, two, three, with this knob. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, as well as, of course, transport and everything else. 
So those are the memory or preset parameters. You can also name a preset or memory, and then you have overall global settings. I won't go through all of these, but I think noteworthy is what I mentioned earlier, where you can change what happens on this display. And there are a few nice options here based on what you want to see. You can see recording status, like I mentioned earlier, or the position of um, both tracks, which is nice. And then finally, there's the input menu. This gives you control over phantom power and also lets you choose which outputs you want to route the various inputs to. So say if you wanted to route the rhythm track just to your headphones, you could route that to one of the outputs. Okay, let's take a look at some of the pros and cons for this pedal. On the cons side, I think the effects are a little limited. Obviously, it depends what you compare it to. Most looper pedals don't have effects at all, but the RC505 has plenty of them. It would have been nice to see maybe just a chorus delay or reverb in here, especially since you've got timing on the pedal. Also, the loop effects aren't applied until you first record a loop, finish recording a loop. And I can sort of understand that because you need to have the timing in advance to pick a part of the loop and recreate it. I guess you can look at these loop effects as more of loop manglers rather than what we typically associate with effects. Aside from that, it would have been nice to see a mode where you can seamlessly loop across multiple presets or memories. Now, currently, if the presets or memories have content, you can seamlessly transition between them if you're not recording, so. I can hit play here and then move to the next one and then move to this lovely one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that does work. However, if you are recording and you change memories, which you can do in real time, then whatever you recorded will be gone. You can't go back to it. And you also can't save while a loop is playing. I don't know if this is a feature that can be added in a firmware update, but it would be nice if you could. And then finally, a feature request, which I think no looping pedals have, but it, you know, one can hope is the ability to put in your custom rhythms. Again, there are nice rhythmic controls here and the ability to remove parts is nice, but it would be great if you could just import your own patterns. On the pros side, aside from having two tracks, which is of course better than pedals that have just one, but obviously less than pedals that have more, to me, the biggest advantage of this pedal is just how customizable it is to your preferred workflow. If you want to loop using the default setup, then great, but if you want to customize it to any behavior you can imagine. So for example, rather than swapping tracks and controlling each track independently, I'd want this stomp switch to control track one and this stomp switch to control track two. You could do that, which frees up this stomp switch for any other function you want, for example, to apply a fill to the rhythm. Yeah, and true, there's some menu diving to it, but you can always ignore the things you don't want to mess with, like the MIDI control, say, and just focus on assigning these stomp switches to what you want. So that's pretty much it for the RC500. If you enjoyed the insights in this video, there are plenty more in my ever-expanding book available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the YouTube bell after subscribing to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.